Mosquitoes are... Mosquitoes... Mosquitoes are a scourge. They annoy us, they suck our blood, and they spread all kinds of horrible diseases. Of the thousands of species of mosquitoes, one of the worst from our perspective is called Aedes aegypti. There's something almost beautiful about the way Aedes aegypti feeds and fills up with blood. But these things also spread the viruses that cause diseases like yellow fever, Zika, and dengue fever. And dengue infects 400 million people around the world every year. They're afflicted by severe joint and muscle pains, fevers, rashes, headaches. Many of them die. There is a long history of trying to control mosquitoes by draining wetlands, using bed nets, spraying them with insecticides. All of these measures are imperfect, and some can be hazardous. Scott O'Neill, a microbiologist at Monash University in Australia, had a new idea for how to protect the world from dengue fever. When you explain that you're working on dengue, everybody's got a personal story about you know, being sick themselves or a child or knowing somebody that's sick. So you spent... Years and years and years... ...trying to find ways of stopping Aedes aegypti from spreading the viruses behind diseases like dengue fever. And your big idea is to inject them with a bacterium from the group Wolbachia. Yeah, so Wolbachia I've been fascinated with for many years, ever since I learnt about Wolbachia. Hey, me too. In fact, if I had to pick my favourite group of bacteria, it would probably be Wolbachia. These things live inside the cells of insects, and something like 40% of arthropod species carry Wolbachia, which means it's arguably one of the most successful groups of microbes on the planet. But Wolbachia only passes down the female line. Males are a dead end to it, and it has many ways of dealing with them. In some species, like the beautiful blue moon butterfly, it kills male embryos outright, so that the adult population can have 100 females for every male. In others, like wood lice or pill bugs, it actually transforms males into females. And this thing is so good at manipulating the sexual lives of its hosts that it spreads like wildfire which, incidentally, is why Scott O'Neill is so interested in it. So how could we harness that ability of Wolbachia to spread into insects to do something good for us? So Scott set out in search of a way of using Wolbachia to keep Aedes mosquitoes from spreading dengue viruses. He started when the first George Bush was still president, and he tried a dozen tricks, including genetic engineering. But nothing seemed to work. But then you had a lucky break. Yeah, something dropped out of the blue from Seymour Benzer's lab in Caltech. And most people haven't heard of Seymour Benzer, but he was a titan of 20th century science. He was one of the first to look at the link between genetics and behavior and his animal of choice was the fruit fly. He found a strain of Wolbachia in the fruit fly. It causes the neurons in the insect's head to explode. Like a bag of microwave popcorn. So they named the strain popcorn. It was one of those rare light bulb moments. We could stop disease transmission without needing to genetically engineer Wolbachia, without needing to do any fancy tricks. If the mosquitoes were infected with popcorn, they would die before getting a chance to spread the viruses into people. But remember, Wolbachia only transmits from mothers to offspring, which means that if you want to infect Aedes with Wolbachia, you need to inject the bacteria directly into a mosquito's embryo. You know, a young embryo is a very delicate thing. So a way to think about this is to imagine a balloon full of water that you need to insert a knitting needle into that and then pull the knitting needle out and the balloon can't break. Um, that's a difficult thing to do. Very few people in the world can do it uh, reliably. And I think we've gotten better over time, but it's a certain skill. You need dexterity, patience, obsession, it's like the art of science. But after all that work, 
the team discovered that their plan had a fatal flaw. Popcorn was just too virulent. It was killing mosquitoes before they had a chance to reproduce. So if ever unleashed into the wild, it just wouldn't spread. And that was a crushing blow. You know, I think we were all ready to give up. But then you finally had a spot of good luck. Yeah, the sequence of events uh, were quite incredible for us. Some of his colleagues made a really surprising discovery about Wolbachia. They found that the bacteria can actually prevent the growth of viruses in the insects that it infects. Now, they found that in fruit flies. So the question was, would it also do the same in mosquitoes? And so we took these mosquitoes that, that had popcorn in them, and we infected them with dengue virus to see what would happen. And we actually found Wolbachia would prevent the viruses from growing. And if these viruses can't grow in the mosquito, they can't be transmitted. It meant that the team didn't need popcorn at all. Almost any strain of Wolbachia would stop Aedes from spreading dengue virus. It was that sort of feeling, you know, when you've been working on something that doesn't work and then suddenly you get a big breakthrough. Finally, after decades of effort, it was time to release those mosquitoes and their microbes into the world. So, Scott, this plan involves asking people to release mosquitoes that you've loaded with a microbe that's really good at spreading rapidly, and those mosquitoes will probably bite them, and no one has ever done anything like this before. Was it hard to convince people to do this? People are frightened of dengue. And they're frightened of the impact it might have on their children. They're frightened that they can't control transmission of it. Everybody knows people that have been terribly sick from dengue. People are desperate for a solution. I think that helps facilitate them coming on the journey with us. Since 2011, Scott's team have set up trial tests in Australia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Colombia, and Brazil. Their mosquitoes have spread Wolbachia as they predicted. But the big question remains, has the number of dengue cases actually gone down? Those experiments are long. Probably we will get the results in two or three years. But in every location that we've put it out now, even though all these locations are relatively small, we're not seeing any disease transmission occurring in those communities. Scientists are still figuring out the details of how Wolbachia blocks the transmission of viruses. But they know that it's not just dengue. It's also the viruses behind Zika, yellow fever, and chikungunya. And they're trying to use bacteria to control other insect pests, like the setse flies that spread sleeping sickness, and bed bugs. I hate bed bugs. This is just part of a whole new approach to thinking about microbes, realizing that they not only kill, they can also save. Thanks so much for watching this episode. To check out more microbe content, like articles and images, visit our Facebook page linked here. And if you're curious about your own microbiome, leave us some comments. I'll be back in a couple of weeks to answer your burning questions. See you next time.